So we're going to talk about the Artemis program. We're going to talk about what is the plan. How do we achieve this? We're going to try to put some details into it, and then I'm going to open it up for a few questions. So if we could uh, go to the first slide here. So when we look at this slide, what we're really looking at is a series of missions that takes us from Artemis 1. This is, in fact, the first flight of SLS with an Orion crew capsule that goes around the moon uncrewed. Artemis 1 is an Orion crew capsule that goes around the moon uncrewed. And by the way, it's going to do some significant testing in orbit at the moon as well. When we go to Artemis 2, we're talking about the first humans to the moon in the 21st century. Now, these humans are going to enter orbit around the Earth, and we're going to test all of the metabolic systems, all of the life support systems on the Orion crew capsule in orbit around the Earth. That's the best place to test it. We don't want to test it at the moon. I see some people giving me a thumbs up on that. That's the goal, test it around the Earth. Now, what that means is that when we do launch it to the moon, which we will do on that flight, we want to take it to the moon, we want all of the, the life support capabilities tested, then when we take it to the moon, it's going to not have quite as much delta V as it would have had before, but we can still do a free return trajectory. In other words, we can launch it around the moon. We're not going to get into low lunar orbit, we're not going to be able to test necessarily the, the navigation capabilities and the maneuverability capabilities, but we can do a free return trajectory after testing the life support capabilities of the spacecraft in orbit around the Earth. So Artemis II, look at the timeline here. This is 2019, I know it's hard to see, 2024 over there. We're looking ultimately to be able to launch humans around the moon in about 2022 for the first time since the Apollo program. Now, after that, we've got to start building the gateway. The first element of the gateway is the power and propulsion element. I want to anchor for a second on how important the gateway is. The gateway has solar electric propulsion. It's in what we call a near rectilinear halo orbit, where it is balanced between the Earth's gravity and the Moon's gravity. In that near rectilinear halo orbit, it can use that very, um, you know, it's, it's small thrust. We're talking about solar electric propulsion, very small thrust. But it can stay in that orbit for very long periods of time. But because it does have that very light thrust, it can also maneuver. It can go to the L1 point. It can go to the L2 point. And it can go between all of these different very balanced areas between the, the Earth's gravity and the Moon's gravity and even the Sun's gravity. That's the value of the gateway. It gives us, key, key point, it gives us more access to more parts of the Moon than ever before. Why is that important? We go back to 1969, 1970, 1971, 1972. Six Apollo missions that landed on the Moon, 12 people walked on the surface of the Moon. I know Andy Aldrin is here and of course his dad was one of the heroes of all of us. But they missed something. What did they miss? They missed the fact that there's hundreds of millions of tons of water ice at the South Pole. Their missions were equatorial in nature. We want more access to more parts. And I know in this room, everybody knew that there was water ice there. Oh, I know that. I'm kidding. <laughs> all of you say that you knew, but nobody really knew. And I, I, I kid. Yeah. It's funny, um, after the water ice was discovered, everyone's like, yeah, we, all, we knew it was there. But, but, the, but the reality is we didn't. And, of course, if you look at the science books back then, they would say the probability is that it's not there. But it actually is there in hundreds of millions of tons. So we want more access to more parts of the moon because there's a lot of science that we can do. Why do we go to the moon? We need this science. We need to learn about this world that is part of the Earth-Moon system. And, we, and what the gateway gives us is more access to more parts of the moon. And that access is not just with landers. Again, it's with robots and rovers and landers and even human landers. Think of it as a command module, a permanent command module in orbit around the moon that can ultimately control these missions on the surface. So that power and propulsion element with solar electric propulsion, um, you, you know, very low delta V, not a, lot of, not a lot of power there, but very high specific impulse. It can last a long period of time. The contractor that will be building that element is, drumroll, Maxar. Maxar is going to build that for the United States of America. And 
and I want to be clear about this acquisition process, to go from where we were to where we are right now so fast, this is, this is a monumental achievement for this little agency we call NASA. And this is going to be the example of how we move things going forward, because if we're going to get the next man and the first woman to the South Pole of the Moon in 2024, we have to have this kind of urgency. We have to move at this, at this level of speed. It is also true that we are procuring that power and propulsion element of the gateway. We are procuring it in a way that we haven't done before. We will have an option to take possession of it after it's on orbit. In other words, we're buying it commercially. They're building it, and then if it all tests well, then we, then we acquire it as, as a country. So this is a different way of procuring it, and it is a big change, and we need to get used to this kind of change as an agency. And we are. We're making these changes quickly. Now, as you go forward, once we have the power and the propulsion element, then we need a crew vehicle. We need a pressurized vehicle. Sometimes we call it a habitat. But I want to be clear. We are not building the International Space Station around the moon. In fact, I don't know that we can call it a habitat at all. We call it a utilization module. Think of it as a very, very small habitat that has a purpose. The purpose? is to get our humans onto a lander and take them down to the surface of the moon. That's what it is there for. There have been times in the past when we talked about the Gateway as a very big device that was going to be a, a big space station for long periods of time. That's not what we're doing by 2024. What we're going to have by 2024 is the power and propulsion element and the utilization module. We call it phase one, phase one of Gateway. Now, by the year 2024, this gets us to Artemis III. By the year 2024, we will have aggregated at the gateway, we will have aggregated three, potentially, three elements of a lander. So by 2024, the gateway will be complete and we will have a lander complete. Now we've got to get there. How do we get there? We launch on the SLS and Orion with the European Service Module. Yes, our international partners are involved in this from day one. So by Artemis III, we will, no kidding, send our astronauts to the gateway where they will transfer into a landing system and go down to the surface of the moon. We are purchasing that landing system also in a way that's never been done before. We're going to buy it as a service. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate the hardware. We're not going to write thousands and thousands of requirements basically designing it in the requirements process, and then putting out an RFI, getting information back, putting out an RFP, evaluating proposals, and then having industry respond to those, you know, all those proposals with all their different ideas, and then some year down the road make a decision and have a, have a contractor. That's not what we're doing. We're saying, who, who can we buy the service from? Our goal is to say, we have an astronaut at Gateway. We want to buy a service. Get them to the surface, get her to the surface, and get them back to the gateway. Who can do that? Because that's what we're buying. We're not owning the hardware, we're buying the service. And that will be on Artemis III in the year 2024. In the meantime, you can see the surface of the moon down here. We're going Earth to the moon. The swoosh takes us to the moon. In the meantime, we have these different robotic missions on the south pole of the moon operated under a new system that we call CLIPS, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services. We are testing again our new model of acquisitions. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, we're, again, we're, not, we're talking about small payloads, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, to the surface of the moon, science payloads, science instruments, maybe some rover capability, but we're buying this as a, surface to the, as a service to the surface of the moon as early as next year. These are small payloads to the surface of the moon, bought as a service as early as next year. NASA has the instruments. We're ready to go. And we've identified contractors, nine of them, that have the ability to get us to the, to the surface of the moon. Eventually, we're going to have larger scale landers and then humans on the moon for the first time in the 21st century in the year 2024.